Now we come back to our PowerPoint. And the next one um, does discuss things we've actually briefly looked at already, glyphs and labels. The, uh, the labels are, are um, we're on that cube one. And you can either set the labels as I did it by clicking on the point, or you can set it by using the selection mode by drawing a, drawing a, a window, and then there you'll find the label for the points and the windows. Glyphs are very useful because you can get a, a better view of what's going on often by using different shapes for each, um, each point. The difficulty glyphs have is that they tend to be much more time consuming. And so whereas, for instance, you can maybe uh, manipulate 400,000, uh, on my laptop, 400,000 points quite adequately. If there are no glyphs, if there are lots of glyphs, then it doesn't work properly. But you can turn the glyphs on or off. And um, typically you keep them off initially. And because you can remember, take the point size and increase the point size. And that at least makes them more visible. Glyphs are only useful where the coloring is insufficient to tell you what you want. You saw that in the previous k-means. I wanted to show what the center was, and I did that by um, making, using glyphs and making the center have a glyph of a different size. And so that's a, um, a useful thing to do. Uh, I should say that uh, unfortunately, you can only choose a single point size for every point in the plot. So you cannot use point size to make a particular point stand out. Uh, this shows you some things we've um, looked at already, actually. Uh, you can sort by clicking on these things here. Uh, actually, I sorted on cluster number for the proteomics case, and that when I had that up there. You have the size, you can also sort on size to get the large clusters. And when you do a multiple selection, the properties of those selections are displayed below it. And you can use those properties to, um, um, you can change those properties. Uh, when you're dealing with a large data set, uh, the so-called default option is pretty useful, because the default uh, does not use glyphs. So if you want to just look at glyphs for a small sample of the points, then you can set all the other points to be default. Although they can't, they then have this miserable uniform gray, gray color. So a default cluster all have the same color. So it's not a perfect situation. We probably need a better, a better approach there. Let's look at that for the um, Full proteomics example, it's the same as we did the 10K proteomics um, points before from the so-called COG data set. Now let's look at a much a factor of 10 bigger uh, data set. And that's also on your resource. And it's called here 100K proteomics.pvis. It's just chucking up here just to get going. Working hard. Sometimes, every now and then, plot this will um, crash on you. In that case, you just have to restart it. It usually cra any crashes, as far as I know, when you, you just give it too much work. But we need to speed up plot this. So we'll get rid of these axes again. I must admit, I typically get rid of axes. And this is a case where we have. So let's, let's see, you can see what we've done here with the label command. So let's get the status of the clusters really clear. It doesn't seem to do anything. Sorry, that's not what I want. That's the wrong thing. I want the legend, not the label. That's a mistake. Here's a legend. We'll set the legend to be true. And then we'll change this width. So here's what we have. We have well, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have ten specified clusters, and which have a modest number of points, a couple of thousand, and then we have uh, most of the um, points are in this uh, so-called default cluster. 
Well, that's what. That's why, and that's mainly things are gray. That's because they're mainly in the default cluster. So let's get this uh, whole plot arranged. Let's sort of try to rotate it. And you can see I'm using my mouse to rotate it. Let's make it bigger. Let's right mouse. And now let's do control, mouse, control left mouse to rotate it in a clean fashion. I think we'll move it down a bit, which is uh, done by changing the center the one way. And let's make the center like that, so that moves it down. We could also do that by um, right by um, well, shift left mouse. That also moves it up and down. Now you can see there are some colors you can vaguely see. Let's try to make those colors a little bigger. And we can do that by looking at the glyphs. Okay, let's come down and find these glyphs. So they're true, auto orientation is false. We showed you that was a confusing. Let's just change the scale factor on these glyphs. All right, so now we had our scale factor on the glyphs of five. And you can really start seeing these uh, clusters. And you can see there are some closely uh, close, close structures and some broad structures. Let's um, move it up a little because we don't really want these tails. So let's make the whole thing just a little bigger. So this is looking at the uh, looking in the detail of what's going on. <coughs> so you, maybe this uh, maybe we think those glyphs are now a bit too big. Let's get them down to. Three. So now that's they're pretty clear. You can see the advantage of making the glyphs when you're studying a small sample of the data. Uh, notice you can get rid of clusters up here. There's this tick mark is for visibility. So um, we could uh, get rid of the, um, the sort of orangey brown thing. We'll just get rid of that. That gets rid of that cluster there. That's a very spread out cluster. Uh, let's get rid of cluster seven. That's also pretty spread out. Um, get rid of that. We'll get back with that one. We can even get rid of the default. You can see now it's maybe even clearer. So you can go back. You need to play around to get what you want there. Here's a nice red one to verify what we understand. It must be this one here. You can see that red one is pretty nicely clumped. As is this blue one, which is probably uh, this one. You see, when you get rid of it, you can actually see your eye tells you where they are. There are a few over here, most of them are here. So you can uh, suggest maybe these ones over here are just some, there's some problem. Uh, I'm not quite certain what it is. If you find this lesion is getting in your way, and of course, you can always get rid of the legend. And we got rid of the legend. So that illustrates what you do on these things. That's it for that. <coughs>